Hello there, this is Xiao, and welcome to another VoxFX PSA. Today's topic, why I make my tutorials the way I do. Now, you've seen I have a, quite a few vocal effects tests now, and some of them are pretty complex and detailed, like the wooden toaster one was fairly complicated, the one for with, with all the vocoders was pretty complicated. Yeah, some of them are fairly complex. But at the same time, you've probably noticed that my tutorials are, so far, pretty basic, like how to use a compressor, how to set up your mic correctly, how to use an EQ, stuff like that, or vocal warm-ups, things like that. And you're probably wondering, like, why not just make the, I don't know, the wooden toaster voice tutorial, like, right now? Well, honestly, not many people would understand it. And that's not because people are stupid. You guys are not stupid. You're smart. You are you ask a lot of great, thoughtful questions. It's just that Many people lack experience with this kind of stuff. It's just that they simply don't know. I'm a firm believer that the better you understand something, the more things you can do with it. For example, one of the synths that I use a lot, uh, Citrus, it has a whole bunch of presets, like a couple hundred presets. And some of them are pretty cool and you can do some neat stuff with it. But you can do so much more with it if you understand like FM synthesis or envelopes or filters or LFOs or Unison or what have you. If you understand those things, you can go far beyond what the presets can do. You could be all like, oh, I'm just going to flip through presets until I find one that sounds good. I don't really know how, why it sounds the way it does, but it sounds all right. And that'll be okay, but it'll only get you so far. But having a deeper understanding of why something sounds the way it does and how to change it to make it sound different, that has so much more power. You could do way more stuff with that. So yeah, like I said, the better you understand something, the more you can do with it. But at the same time, audio production and just audio engineering in general is complex. It's pretty complicated and it's also pretty counterintuitive. Like it might not always make sense why things work the way they do, but that's how they work. It's just like, it's counterintuitive, it's complex, and it's not very common knowledge. Like most people don't really talk about FM synthesis or LFOs, or various, I don't know, wave tables. Most people don't even know what a wave table is. It's not common knowledge. So because of these reasons, if I made the complex stuff first, people wouldn't understand. Like, they could probably make the sound fine, but they wouldn't understand why it sounds the way it does, or like how to use the plugins and techniques to do other things beyond that one sound. So that brings me to my goal with my tutorials. The expression is zero to hero. I want to bring you from being someone who has no idea how any of this stuff works to having the foundation necessary to do it yourself and start doing your own experiments and finding your own sounds. I want to start with the basics and build up. I want to get everyone on the same level and then do the complex stuff so that people don't get lost. Like the wooden toaster example. I know people have been asking about that for a while and I will get to it, but because of how I have my tutorials set up, I need to build up to it because in order for you to do the wooden toaster voice, you need to have an understanding of EQ, compression, distortion, melodyne, vocal formants, and pitch shifting vocal doubles. If you don't understand those things, you can still technically make the voice, but that's about it. And that's my point is like, I don't want people to treat my tutorials like recipes. That's why I don't give like specific plugin settings. Like you need to set the threshold on your compressor to exactly 24 dB or whatever. I sometimes give ranges of values, but even then I don't really do a whole lot with that. Like for a de-esser, like sibilance exists between 3K and 10K. That's a huge range. I don't give specific values because specific values aren't helpful. That doesn't help you. It, well, first and foremost, it's like your sound could be completely different. And if I give a specific setting, it might be completely irrelevant to what you're doing. But more importantly, 
I don't want you to focus on the settings. I want you to focus on the concepts behind what I'm doing. If you treat my tutorials like a recipe, you'll only be able to make one sound, the one in the video. But if you understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, then you can take the lessons that I show you and go even farther. My goal is to expand your knowledge, not just tell you how to make a specific sound. Just knowing how to make that one sound, that's not helpful. Like you could only do so much with that one sound. But if you know how to make, if you know the principles behind that sound, then you can do so much more. You can make tons of sounds. You can take any of the tools that I've shown you and make things way beyond the examples that I'm giving you. You can take some many of the effects and combine them together in new and interesting ways. Like you could take, uh, like I mentioned, the noise riser. You could put a delay and reverb, like I said, or you could put like unison on it, or you could use something that's not noise. You could use a saw wave, or you could use uh, some sort of FM synthesis mess, or you could put a phaser on it, or you could bit crush it. I don't know. You could do tons of things like taking what I've shown you and just going beyond that. So basically to sum up everything, I've just, I know I've been rambling a lot with this one. I want to give you the tools that you need to make the things you want to make. And then once you have those tools, you'll be able to just go way beyond anything that I probably could have come up with because you're a different person. Like we think in different ways. And because of that, we come up with different ideas. If you just followed what I was telling you the whole time, then we would just we would be stuck. But if you take my suggestions, my tutorials, and apply your spin to them, you'll be able to do some things that you never thought were possible. So yeah, in short, I make tutorials the way I do because I want to get everyone up to the same level and then help them do what they want to do. That was super rambly. But yeah, that's about it for this video. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions about what I've discussed here, comment below. I'm always open for questions. Also, please let me know if there are any audio or music related concepts that you want me to talk about in the future. I don't, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. And as always, if you'd like to request a Vox FX tutorial, please send me a message. If it's talky, I can talk about it. My next tutorial should be coming out in a week. Until then, have fun and keep making sound.